this is by way of being something of a special request video as somebody asked me to do a a brief presentation on who michael collins was if anyone irish is watching i know you'll know already and i know you'll know how contested he is and all the arguments about it but this is for someone who Mer who's american and has little idea about this particular bit of irish history and they asked for a brief presentation Okay, so we're going to use Wikipedia for it. Um, bear in mind, before I start this, there are multiple perspectives on Mr. Collins' life, and I'm only offering one perspective. And you could spend your entire life arguing about him. I'm going to use Wikipedia and do your very basic presentation, use some um, facts and figures from the state broadcaster, Radio Television, Sharon, and something from the Atlas of the Irish Revolution about him. I think that should be enough to give you an idea of why he's so important in Irish history. Michael Collins was an Irish revolutionary soldier and politician who was a leading figure in the early 20th century struggle for Irish independence. During the War of Independence, he was Director of Intelligence of the Irish Republican Army and Government Minister of the Self-Declared Irish Republic. Um, I'll summarise some of the rest because this is quite a lengthy article. Collins was born in County Cork, which is was one of the area of Ireland which, during the Anglo-Irish War, would, would is generally regarded as where the fighting was the most fierce outside Dublin. It's sometimes called the Rebel County. I'll come back to that actually. I think for a second presentation to show you why that was, and you and show you another figure. Um, Collins was from a fairly prosperous sort of what you'd call a strong farming family. His father was quite elderly when he was born. Um, he actually went and moved to London to work for quite a time and worked in the post office here and moved back to Ireland just before the Easter Rising and fought there. He was then taken pr prisoner at the end of that, as were a lot of other people, and interned in Frongok internment camp, as this article notes, which is in Wales and was released in December 1916. He then returned to Ireland, where he became an increasingly important figure. He did start to clash with some figures as well at this point, because Collins' approach to doing things um, caused tensions with other figures who had other um, views on how to do things. Collins' view was that an open war was not particularly a great way to run a revolution when you were fighting a huge empire and you had limited men. He was more in favour of guerrilla war strategies and, and intelligence-based strategies. And that's why he's famous. Um, I'll run through this article and just go down it so you can see some pictures of him. There he is at age eight with his families. Some of his family, some of his family lived to quite, um, quite extensive, quite extended lives, and didn't die till well into the seventies. I remember he had quite a clan of siblings. Nothing unusual for that in in the Irish family of the day. There's captured Irish soldiers in Stafford Jail after the failed Easter Rising. That's Collins in the Irish Volunteers. If you're not familiar with the Irish Volunteers, they were created um, in response to the formation of the Ulster Volunteers. This should give you an idea, by the way, of how complicated this history gets, because now I'll have to tell you what the Ulster Volunteers were and the Irish Volunteers and do another presentation afterwards. Uh, during the Easter Rising, he acted as um, the aide-de-camp to Joseph Plunkett, who was one of the signatories of uh, the Declaration of of, of the proclamation of the republic and basically they hold a status roughly equivalent in irish history to your founding fathers in america this is michael collins and arthur griffith who is the founder of Sinn fein um there you have members of the first oil where they kind of just ignore the british and set up their own government He's also famous because of his business expertise. He was quite effective as raising money. Oh, and the infamous um, loan to loan to the Soviet Union, where they loaned the, the the nascent Soviet Union quite a bit of money. I'm not making that up. That's that's actually a, 
a rather hilarious bit of Irish history. You can look that one up. Um, one of his best friends, Harry Boland there, who unfortunately during the Civil War, they would end up tragically on different sides. And the other major figure of Irish politics who would outlive De Valera by well over 50 years, Eamon De Valera, who was born in New York. This is Collins in London when they had the delegate to the Anglo-Irish Treaty negotiations, which featured Collins as one of the um, leaders on the Irish side, Winston Churchill on the other. Basically, this ended up with... Uh, Ireland partitioned, and it's more complicated than that, but we'd be here all night if I tried to do a presentation summing up all of it. Um, it ended up basically you had the creation of Northern Ireland with six counties up in the north, 26 counties down in the, in the south. The outcome of this didn't go down well, of course, with some people back home who felt it was a betrayal of what the Republic on fire had been all about. Uh, my own personal view is is mixed. Had I been alive at the time, I'd have probably be, thought it it wasn't the greatest outcome and I'd have probably ended up on the side fighting against Collins, but I'd have also understood that Collins pragmatically did all he could. He wasn't going to beat a whole empire and he certainly wasn't going to greet the British Empire with a very small group of several thousand men with a couple of thousand rifles and limited armor armament. This just simply wasn't going to happen. Collins was eventually, unfortunately, killed uh, uh, in fighting um, a bill on a bluff where they, in his own county, not too far from his own home, where he where there was a, a shootout during the Civil War, and his death is regarded by many as one of the biggest tragedies of Irish history because no one knows what he would have done. I'm not a great fate, um, fan of what ifs, you know, uh, perhaps Collins would never have done more than he di did already. But then again, since he died in his early 30s and had already done more than most people in Irish history have ever done for the country, he'd done enough. Um, here you go. Uh, the Boston Post giving a headline about it. There's all sorts of strange and odd conspiracy and collusion claims about Collins' death. I would treat a lot of them with great suspicion and be very cautious about the material you read about him. This is from the Atlas of the Irish Revolution, Michael Collins on the Intelligence War. In this extract from the Atlas of the Irish Revolution, Michael Foy writes that Michael Collins' intelligence operations had a repetition for omniscience, and though this was not the case, the myth became a political weapon. I think that's a fairly good sum summary. Collins was regarded as almost everywhere, seeing everything. Of course, no intelligence officer is. After the rebel surrender in Moore Street, Dublin, 20, on 29th um, April 1916, volunteer Michael Collins vowed, by Christ, I'll have my revenge for this. By early 1919, as Irish Volunteers Director of Intelligence, he, in partnership with Chief of Richard, Staff Richard Mulcahy and Dublin Brigadier Dick McKay, the latter who was unfortunately would die a very unpleasant and tragic death, when clandestinely preaching for renewed war with the British, this tribe member envisaged a volunteers intelligence organisation attacking British agents, especially the detectives of the Dublin Metropolitan Police G Division in order to provoke the military conflict they regard as inevitable. If you read that, if you get a chance, you'll see why he's regarded as such a, an effective intelligence officer and how he basically, with a very limited number of men, managed to upset nearly a whole empire. He's not infallible and sometimes... There's a particular myth about him that's created, which is, um, I think, overdone. But he certainly was very, very good at his job as an intelligence officer. The Israeli um, leader, Mitchum Begin, um, was a great admirer of him, as were some other early Israeli officers and Israelis involved in the creation of the Israeli state, as of other people being. And here's 
um, um, a report from Radio Televis Sharon, the Irish state broadcaster. Of all the Irish signatures on the treaty, Michael Collins was the one His Majesty's government had prized the most. He became chair of the provisional government, but by the summer he was locked in the Civil War. The early days of June 1922 found Michael Collins a busy man, occupied with a plethora of tasks, each seemingly as important and as urgent as the next. The resolution of which were pulling him in several different directions simultaneously. The political and psychological pressures bearing down him were acute as the task of discerning the optimum course of action became daily more difficult, not least because of factors outside his control. It goes on to kind of summarise the problems with um, drafting the early constitution, the road to civil war, the issues in Northern Ireland where further rioting and, well, quite horrible behaviour was occurring and how refugees were fleeing into Dublin from Belfast and how this all eventually dissolved. This is James Craig, who was the leader of Northern Ireland during this era. At the time this was ongoing, you had De Valera, who was the leader of the opposite side, and eventually all would things would devolve into a a brief but unpleasant civil war where, well, the casualty figures aren't huge, but less the the outcome of it still leaves a, a lasting bitterness in Irish politics, and you can still get some really nasty and heated rows going on about it. And I mean really seriously nasty heated rows. If you're American and you're you will understand that if you can compare it to the rows you can get going in America about the Confederates versus the the Union troops and how here they can get. Imagine rows of a, a similar kind and you'll be about there. <laughs> 